So in this video, I'm going to cover how we can have access uh, on our Mac computers. Uh, as many of you have Macs in the classroom, and uh, obviously we don't want to come to school to work on access all the time. So here I have uh, access running, and currently I'm on my MacBook. And uh, as you can see, with a swipe of a finger, I'm back to Mac OS. Uh, and I can just go back to access and work on it. Uh, so how do I do that? Uh, well, the biggest thing to understand is I am actually remotely logging into a server and, and the access is not actually installed on my Mac. Uh, what I've done is I've got myself a virtual server through Amazon EC2, which is completely free for one year, uh, and I installed access on it um, using my credentials with Uvic, which is also free. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to walk you through on how to um, basically get started with the Amazon EC2 virtual uh, computer and then uh, set up access on it uh, so you can use it in order to uh, uh, do your assignments uh, for this course so you don't have to come to school all the time. So uh, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to uh, go to uh, Google and uh, find out the website. So I'm just going to go to Google and uh, I'm going to type Amazon EC2. Two. Now, you do need an Amazon account uh, in order to uh, create an account with the Amazon uh, uh, Web Services. And um, during the setup process, it does ask you for a credit card number as well as a phone number. And uh, you do have to verify your phone number by entering a PIN code uh, and also uh, an enter a valid credit card. Now, they're not going to charge that credit card for the first year, but if you do, uh, choose another product or um, you don't cancel your services within that one year, then you're going to end up, uh, you know, getting charged. Uh, so you're going to have to uh, create an account. Um, now, I already have an account, uh, so I can't really show that to you. But uh, once you have an account, uh, then you can follow these instructions on, on how to set it up. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to sign in uh, to the console. And uh, my password is automatically filled in. I'm going to log in. And I'm uh, presented with this uh, window which offers all these crazy services that Amazon Web Services offer. Uh, but what I am interested in is something called EC2. Uh, don't ask me what it stands for, I have no idea. And uh, once you click on EC2, you're presented with this uh, kind of EC2 dashboard. Uh, what this allows you to do is set up different virtual computers um, and run them uh, either simultaneously or independently or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, so you're going to click on launch instance. That means that you want to start a new virtual computer. Uh, now, during your setup, uh, you were asked to download a text file uh, for an encryption code. It's very important not to lose that in encryption code because as you're going to see, we're going to need it pretty soon. Uh, so one thing I'm going to do is because I'm looking for the free um, server and I don't want to pay for it, I'm only go I'm going to filter uh, my options by free tier only. So this will make sure that I'm not going to get charged for the first year. And uh, scrolling down, uh, there are multiple Windows options as you can see here, uh, but I'm going to go with uh, the latest version of Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 release uh, at, at 64 bits. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to select that. Uh, and then it's going to give me some options. Uh, and like I said, there are tons of different options uh, that Amazon offers, but there's only one that's free. Uh, so we're going to go and select the general purpose T2 Micro. And as you can see right here with this green free tier eligible, uh, it, it tells us that it's going to be free. So we're going uh, uh, to review and launch this instance. Uh, so right here is just giving us a little uh, little rundown about the details. Uh, again, if you wanted to pay, uh, you could add more storage, you can make it more powerful, you can add more RAM. However, for what we're doing, it's not required. Um, and we're going to go and click uh, launch. So right here is where it comes uh, important. Uh, this is where it's asking you to uh, create or, or select the encryption code. So we're gonna, uh, because I already have an encryption code, I'm just gonna say choose an existing pair and I'm gonna select add a man and I'm gonna check off and say launch instances. So now what it's doing is actually in the background, it's creating that virtual computer for me. Uh, so it is going to uh, take a few minutes for this to be actually successful. 
Uh, and I'm, what, in that time, what I can do is I can go to my um, dashboard. And uh, right here, I can go to uh, two volumes or, or running instances, doesn't matter. I click on it. And right here, so now I, I see that I have two computers uh, running. Uh, one is completely done because I've been using that for the last couple of days. And the other one is actually initializing, which is the one that we're just about to set up. So I'm going to uh, give it a few minutes uh, for that to set up. So while this is uh, initializing, we do have to do one more uh, step. And so we need a desktop client to be able to connect uh, to this server. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to App Store. And I'm going to type in uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop. And it comes right there. And uh, this is the software that we're looking for. And you want to install this uh, so you can actually connect to that remote uh, cloud server. Uh, obviously, I have it already installed, so it's not giving me the install option. But uh, you will see the option to install uh, for yourself. So it's still uh, initializing. We're going to give it a, a few more minutes. OK, so now that uh, it's com the initialization is complete, I'm ready to log in uh, for the first time. So in order to log in, I'm going to need a couple things. Uh, the first thing that I need is I need a file uh, that the remote desktop client that I installed is going to recognize for all the configurations. So I'm going to uh, click on and we're going to select the, uh, the computer that I want to connect to, click, uh, hit connect. And here it's going to say download remote desktop file. And uh, I'm going to hit that. And that's just a configuration file. So you don't have to enter any fancy information. It's automatically going to do that for you. And then the other thing you want to do is click on get password. When you hit get password, it's going to ask for that file that you previously downloaded. So you need to go and find that encryption file. Um, and you're going to load it up and hit decrypt password and that will give you the password for the Windows system. And as you can see, it's a very weird password that it's hard to type. Uh, so I'm just going to copy it and then I'll be able to paste it. So um, once I've downloaded that file, uh, I can go ahead and uh, click uh, on that configuration file and it's automatically going to launch. I just want to make sure I select the correct one, which is, should be a brand new installation. And I believe it's this one right here. Uh, it's going to say initializing, doing the credentials, and just waiting for the Windows to launch uh, for the first time. So now that my um, system is initialized, uh, however, I cannot copy and paste that password here. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, right here in the settings, I'm going to uh, open it up. Sorry, not that way. I'm going to edit it. And right here under the password, I'm going to paste the password that I originally copied. Uh, that way, it's going to enter the password automatically, and then I don't have to uh, try to type that in. So I'm actually going to um, close this instance, and I'm going to launch it again. And it should automatically log me in with the uh, credentials. And as you can see, it's automatically entered the password. And of course, it does uh, take a little while uh, for the Windows to launch for the first time. OK, so now I have uh, my Windows running. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to install Firefox. Uh, and you might be asking why, and you're about to see it in a second. Uh, because this is Windows Server, and it's not a, a home uh, computer software. It has a lot of security features, uh, and it's going to um, always give me certain errors. So the first thing I want to do is just go to Google, or actually Firefox.com. It's probably the fastest way. And again, you're going to get all these uh, notifications all the time. And you just kind of have to
fight through this thing. Okay, now that I've finally gone through all those annoying uh, prompts, I can download Firefox. And of course, more of them. And I'm going to run and install Firefox. You may have noticed, uh, obviously, things are running a little bit slower uh, than normal, and this is expected. It's a very uh, basic server is what we're working on. You know, only got one gigabyte of RAM and a very limited CPU, uh, so you know it's normal. Just going to do the regular standard installation. And once the installation is complete, I'm going to go and launch Firefox just because it's uh, so much easier to work with. So once we have uh, Firefox running, I am going to uh, Google for Office 365. Whoops. Yeah, okay, well, it recognized anyways. And I'm going to go to products that uh, Office right there. So I don't know. Oh yeah, I do want to close this one. And right here I am going to sign in. So here's the thing. Um you can get free version of Office. However, uh you have to actually link up uh, with your UVIC email address. So there's a whole bunch of instructions on how to do that. Uh so make sure that you actually are have a login. Uh, to Microsoft Office uh, through your UVIC email and what that allows you to do is download all um, Office products for free uh, while you're at school. So I'm going to go and sign in using my UVIC email address. Just having some password issues. Here we go. And uh, right at the top here, uh, there's going to be a little uh, prompt says install Office 2016. And uh, you can click on that uh, install Office. I'm not going to go through that process because it's fairly straightforward. Um, at this point, you are running a, a Windows uh, you know, based computer, so you should be familiar with how to install Access. Um, now, keep in mind that this server only has 30 gigabytes of uh, hard drive space. so. Um, you know, you can only do very basic stuff uh, and you can transfer files between uh, this virtual computer and your Mac using a service like Dropbox or iCloud um, or, or some sort of an emailing uh, system as well. You can email back and forth those access files if you need to uh, or access your access connects from right here. So uh, I hope you found this video uh, somewhat helpful and uh, easy to follow. Um, and uh, have fun using uh, Access on your Mac.